Welcome to Unpacked. A series where we break down the big stuff that lives in your mind rent-free. And we make it more manageable. Hi, I'm Beck. And I'm Tom. And today we're going to be talking about AI music. Why are people talking about it? And what do musicians think of it? And is it even legal, Bex? Well, we'll have to go through the box. Nice. Very nice. That was lit. Now, Bex, what is in this box, you ask? Well, we've got six different topics that we're going to discuss today all about AI music, starting with... This little robot toy. He's gorgeous. He's quite cute, isn't he? Now, this robot toy actually symbolises the history of AI music. And I'm going to give you one of my Tomo timelines all about the history of AI music. And did you know, AI music has actually been around for quite a long time. 70 years. What? Starting off with 1951, when Alan Turing created the first computer that actually generates music. I had absolutely no idea about that. Who knew he was a musician, right? Well, exactly. You would have thought he was a bit busy yep. at that point in time. So after Alan Turing, nothing really too much happened until 1990, when things really started to blow up for AI music. So David Bowie in 1990, which I'm sure he used this software called Verbicizer, where basically he inputs a load of words into his software and it would rejig those words into lyrics for a song, which I'm sure he used for his songs in the past. That sounds absolutely manic yeah. and chaotic and unhinged. Yeah, for 1990s though, I, th I think that's pretty advanced technology. I mean, I guess the scary thing about it is that AI feels like it's a completely new thing. Things actually started growing a lot more in 2016 when Sony actually created a um, software called Flow Machines. You can create melodies in the style of other artists. Now, as we see now in 2023, David Guetta created a song with yeah. Eminem without Eminem's consent by just generating his voice online. It's gone from being able to create melodies in the style of artists to yeah. now being able to get their voice in 2023 in a song without their permission and without them even needing to be there. This brings a question of, is this a threat to artists in the future? Like, do let us know in the comments. So what would you, would you say, sorry? So like where it's just kind of like conversation of us trying to work out of a way to say yeah. like and subscribe yeah, and then just the make a joke well. out of it yeah. in the editing process. Like it's trying to like yeah. elevate a music or something. Yeah. I'm standing by my original. You know what rhymes with scary AI? Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> What's that up in the sky? It's not AI, it's like and subscribe. Do you speak French? No. And Bex, do you know what else like? <laughs> you know what else rhymes with AI? Like and subscribe. <laughs> what an awful joke, but actually do like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is a ghostwriter. Yep. Um, I'm talking about Drake. Basically, I don't know if you heard it, but there was an artist called Ghostwriter who was making AI-generated songs and made one called Heart on My Sleeve, which was Drake featuring The Weeknd. I did see that. It was available across streaming services for like 24 hours and then it just disappeared. Got taken down, did it? Yeah, well, apparently, reportedly, it was because Universal Music Group took it off and reclaimed it being like Drake's work. So like, because of copyright or? They thought it was, it, it was, it's imitating Drake, isn't it, essentially? So obviously people really want like a Drake or The Weeknd collab or whatever. But yeah, they were not happy about Ghostwriter's antics. Drake really got in his feelings about it. Mm. He went onto Instagram after a, a separate AI generated song with Ice Spice went viral and he was like featuring on Ice Spice's song and he shared it to his story and he was like, this is the final straw. Yeah. No more. It's interesting because I can see why it's a problem, but also like, it could be a good indicator to see what people really want in music. Mm. So obviously I'd understand if you're making money from it, that's a different story. Like if people are seeing Drake and The Weeknd as a mm -hmm. collab or Drake and I Ice Spice and they're saying, this is good music. Right. Then well, exactly. Taylor Swift and Lana Del Rey, yeah. when they put out their feature, everyone was like, this is so disappointing. You cannot hear Lana Del Rey. So what have they done? They've made like AI generated where she actually has a verse and yeah. now they're re-releasing it. And this which is saying, is exactly, like, this yeah. is what we want. Yeah. And maybe, it, I mean, that, that's where it could be helpful with artists in the future. Now this goes on to the next point of someone like Grimes. Grimes has actually gone from the back of this drama about Drake and The Weeknd and Ghostwriter and has now put out a tweet basically saying, look, you can use my voice 
as AI generated music, make whatever you want mm -hmm. with it. This creates the conversation of how's it going to work with Grimes when it comes to features? Mm -hmm. For example, creating a song using lyrics that she hasn't said, yeah. let's say offensive lyrics, and then everyone's like, what's all this about? And she's then making money off offensive lyrics. Yeah, it's a really like brave thing to do to like just consent to all all use of your voice. Like, I don't think I'd do it. Like, would you essentially sell your voice for that? 50-50 split to use someone's voice sounds a bit ridiculous to me. If I was, if I had a feature on a song, I'd want to be paid a lot more than 50%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I wonder if like the value translates across. Like for example, if you knew you were listening to an AI song, you're always going to discredit it because it's not the real Grimes or it's not the real Drake. But how would they know that? through the song. Because, I don't know, surely it doesn't sound the same. Like Grimes is, herself isn't going to be singing every song. It's going to be the AI training data that makes it sound somewhat yeah. like her. But then again, with the Drake and Weekend, going back to that, did you notice a difference between if it was Drake or not? I, to me, it could have been Drake or The Weekend. Would you want your voice being used without your permission or with your permission just because you're getting a certain amount of money from it? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but also another thing to think about is like, who has earned that money like in the 50-50 split? It's Grimes' voice, so she should get some compensation. But then isn't it like the person that's worked with the AI to generate the song? Like how much are they really owed? They've just kind of trained the AI, right? Yeah, it's true. But then again, the conversation goes to how much is Grimes doing in this song? Mm -hmm. She's not doing anything and she's basically getting passive income from her voice and her reputation. Yeah, it's kind of beaky. It is an interesting one. Well, Drake does have a label and that is... Mm -mm. What's that? Universal Music Group. Okay. Universal Music Group are obviously not happy with this either. They look after Drake, they look after The Weeknd. After Ghostwriter's track went viral, they went in on streaming services, obviously got it removed, but they also wrote strongly worded letters to say, AI needs to be reined in. Our artists are at risk, essentially. They likened AI to deep fakes, fraud, and stealing their artist's compensation, which I guess we've kind of like touched on already. So it all comes down to money purely because they own, so what, they own Drake and The Weeknd, right? So yeah. So they own their voices, pretty much. So it's gone so far as to create in a human artistry campaign, which is made up of over 40 founding entertainment organizations who basically want to put a stop to AI before it is unstoppable. Yeah. What they want to do is make sure that AI doesn't get ahead of the human creator and it doesn't like cut out human creativity. But do you not think AI is already in front of humans? Yeah, and a lot of people work with it day to day anyway. It's evidently been helping. It can produce things quicker. It can put out, I don't know, not as good as surely, but people are enjoying what it's producing and what it's generating. So they feel at risk. After all of that, Universal Music Group have now partnered with an AI agency. Okay. So the AI agency is called Endel, and what they're going to be doing is prioritising ethical AI, where the artist comes first, rather than trying to shut it down. Is that all because they're going to be earning money from AI music? Because AI music was using their artists to technically, I guess you could say, earn money. I imagine that would vex you, right? Yeah. But I wonder also if it's just that you can't just get rid of it. You can't just say, I don't like this anymore. New bestie. Basically how we got here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so AI may never be able to replicate emotions that we experience, but we can project how we feel onto AI. So I don't know if you remember, but there was a whole love scandal like a couple of years ago between lo-fi girl and lo-fi boy. So you know how she sits like typing in her window? Yes. People noticed him in the background and it was like a whole love story. Yeah. These are just av like avatars. And that's interesting because how has somebody who is just online, a computer online who's just been designed to sit there and study for 24 hours, mm -hmm. always on my recommended page, I, c I can never get her off, always just studying, how has that become part of our lives? How are we connected with her? Because this beauty right here is somebody that I've been connected with. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Hang on. <laughs> so Hatsune Miku was basically created in 2007 and she is a virtual singer where you can put melodies, lyrics into her, I guess, the software. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> She's the virtual singer. She can sing it for you. She can perform it for you. And I just find that so weird because we were speaking about how AI can't show personality, mm -hmm. yet... She's got a lot of followers online. Yeah, and this is a serious piece of merchandise that people buy. Yeah. Like, 
my Taylor Swift cardigan. It is the equivalent for her. Exactly, because people buy that because I'm guessing they like her, feel connected, are subscribed mm -hmm. to her socials. Mm -hmm. But how? Because she's just a virtual person. And this, this brings on the conversation of, do we actually need real people in the future behind music? So for example, right now, artists like The Weeknd do music videos animated. It's not just The Weeknd either. Billie Eilish as well, when she did her Disney Plus tour show. Yeah was just an animated version of herself. It was kind of cool to watch, but I also was, was low-key disappointed. Yeah. Hot take. And that's the thing. Is AI music also seen as a bit of a lazy thing? Or are they not just commenting on the future of music themselves? Are they not just saying, like, this is going to be me in 10 years, so Potentially. I'll just start doing it with my like, when I'm in control? It's not like an alien concept to the music industry anyway. I mean, look at how many people are going to the um, ABBA Voyage, mm. where they're just holograms. I suppose that's okay, because you are paying for a ticket knowing that you're watching a hologram, but that is crazy business. The gorillas as well have always been avatars. For years and years, nobody realized the lead behind the gorillas was the same as Blur. Yeah. I guess it's always been a concept. If you were gonna generate an AI song, what would it be? Like and subscribe now. <laughs> actually, no, actually, like and subscribe. That was a good song. <laughs> That's what it would be called, like and subscribe, AI version. <laughs> Am I allowed to generate AI music from people who aren't alive anymore? Well, let's have a look at the law. So, Jay-Z's long-time sound engineer, Young Guru, says that the voice of law needs to be applied to AI now. So, we're going to try and break it down, okay? Are you ready to go on this journey with me? Yes, I am. Okay. Take me on the journey. So, it all comes down to the way that things are purported, which in pop terms is just like the way it's marketed or sold to somebody else. Right. If you did an AI song, if it was Drake, Matt Miller, Juice World, whoever, and uploaded it as anonymous, then you're like kind of sound. If you did it as a tribute act, say like Snake in the Weekday, yeah. then you're also generally sound. When you start like marketing it, as the artist you've trained the AI on, that slippery slope comes in. So if you basically claim to be someone else, then that's absolutely fine, even though you're using the AI's voice. Yeah, essentially. So as long as you don't say their name, you can use their voice still. I just but don't get it. Because it's not their voice. So copyright law protects any original piece of work. So right. you couldn't just reuse Drake's new album because that's their work and that's protected by copyright. But if you trained your AI to sound like some of that work, then you're regenerating it into a new output. So it's not original right. work that's being rehashed. So is it the same situation as, for example, somebody might sound like Drake, but yeah. you can't just smack a copyright strike on them because they sound like Drake? Arguably. So you could just claim that <laughs> it's not actually Drake, it's just AI generated, or it's just someone who sounds like Drake, right? But the thing with copyright is that even though all original work is protected by it, yeah. there is some that comes under fair use. When it falls under fair use is if it's being used to educate, to comment on, or to make fun of. So long as you can say, oh, I was using this to review this, or I was making light of this, and I, that's why I used this track or this yeah. Drake song, then it falls under fair use and you've defended your right to use it. Right, okay. At the moment, in law, all there is is that if you were to use copyrighted material to train an AI and regenerate a new output of work, like Heart on My Sleeve, it's fine. There's nothing in law stopping you from doing that. What do you think? Should it be legal? Is it not too late, though? Back in 2016, we were already kind of stealing artists' work, I guess you could say. But don't you think it's really tricky because, like... Even this year, Ed Sheeran went to trial, didn't he, over yeah. whether or not he had reused Marvin yeah. Gaye's Let's Get It On. Yeah. And at the end of it, he said that his artistic integrity was like on the line because what else could he use? There's one instrument and this amount of melodies or chords, whatever you can use. Yeah. So I don't know that it is too late. How would you feel if somebody made a song and it was your voice? If I was an artist, again, I think I feel like it all goes down to money. If you've built your personality for so many years online through doing music and then somebody just starts up, steals your voice to create a song, gets big, as an artist, that's frustrating. The whole thing makes me want to go outside and touch some grass, to be fair. So Don't blame you. You can let us know in the comments if you think it should be 
illegal. So, what's next then? Well, we've got an empty box. We have. Looking at some predictions, Rolling Stone say that AI could be the largest distributor to the music industry since digital downloads. Crazy. Yeah. The CEO of the Recording Academy says we have to get it right early on to protect the creative magic that humans can make. It seems that we've reached a point of like, we need to find a way to work with it and not against it. Maybe create melodies from it. But when it comes to the voice itself, I think it should always come from humans. I don't think AI should be a part of that. And the fact that AI can even do that is creepy. We need humans to still be able to connect with humans online. It shouldn't be something where you can just go online, get an AI generated voice to sing it for you. That just blows my mind. Let us know what you think. And do let us know what you want to unpack in the next episode. See you next time, unpackers. Well, I need to say that as well. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> See you next, next time, time, unpackers. unpackers. <laughs> Why did you Shocking. Unpackers. Unpackers. <laughs>